Hey guys, I'm Coach Ty with Muscle Wiki. This is Cheska, and we'll be taking you through the side plank. So having good form on your side plank, some stuff not to do. And then once you're really good at side planking, how to progress from there and how to make the movement a little more difficult. Uh, so first, we're gonna start from the forearm, <clears throat> from the elbow. And I'll have you go ahead and get into position with your hips still on the floor. Now you can either stack your feet on top of each other like that, or you can stagger. Whichever one, if you're just starting off, whichever one of those feels more comfortable, feel free to go with that one. Uh, for the sake of the video, we'll go feet stacked on top of each other. And then from there, real simple and plain, you just wanna pick your hips up off the ground and you're holding in that position. Now you should feel this oblique working to keep you up. And we also, we want a straight line from head to toe. We don't wanna let the hips get too high or too low. Yep, yep, <laughs> we're just holding in that position, yeah. And let's go five, four, three, two, one, resting, good. Now if you start feeling yourself shaking, that's a good thing, that's your obliques fatiguing. Your obliques and your abs, you can go ahead and sit up. Um, your obliques and your abs are a little bit different than the rest of your muscles in that they're trying to prevent movement instead of necessarily inducing movement. They wanna keep you from rotating, flexing, or hyperextending too far to where you sustain a spinal injury. Your obliques specifically, they wanna keep you from rotating too far, or like in the case of the side plank, they wanna keep you from laterally flexing too much. So a hold is gonna be the best way to train those muscles. So the first progression we'll go over will be side planking from the hand. So again, set a rep range for your side plank. Now let's say that's 15 to 30 seconds. Once you're able to do 30 seconds for on a forearm side plank pretty comfortably, time to progress. And the first place I'd suggest you start with would be progressing to a hand side plank. And then you bring that rep range back down to let's say 10 to 20 seconds. Once you're back to doing a comfortable 30, we'll progress again. And I'll show you the next progression here in a second. So your form is largely gonna be the same from the hand. It's just uh, your levers are a lot longer. So this is gonna be more difficult to put it mildly. So we're just gonna go up, yep. And then you wanna take that off hand and put on your side there. Try your best to not let this shoulder sag forward, especially on a side plank. You wanna try to open up your chest. Imagine you're showing a logo on your chest to whatever's in front of you. Yep, you can go ahead and rest. And cut, that's it. <laughs> I was like, do I have anything else to say about this? No, I don't think so. Our next progression will be adding weight to it. Now you can do this from either the forearm or the hand, but either way, you start in position and you wanna have the dumbbell on your hip. Now I'll show you some other places you can put the dumbbells in some of our other progressions here in a second, but start off on the hip. It's right dead center, not dead center, but pretty much in the middle between your toes and your hand or your forearm. So it's a good lever point for you to start from with weight. And then from there, you'll just hold in that same position. And keep your hand on that dumbbell and again, set your rep range 15 to 30 seconds. Once you get up to 30 seconds comfortably with a particular weight, add some more weight to it. Go from 10 to 12 and a half pounds, or then to 15, so on and so forth. Okay, then back down, roll, let the dumbbell roll off of you, and that's it. Our third group of progressions will be complexity. So you can progress a movement by adding more complexity on top of, of course, increasing the volume like we've talked about up to this point. So one example of creating or adding more complexity will be adding more movement. So here we have a side plank up down. You can do this body weight. It's a little bit easier if you go all the way to the floor like Cheska's doing here in this clip. If you wanna keep the tension on the muscle, do not go all the way to the floor. And then of course we can continue to add more volume after we've added complexity. So adding a dumbbell onto your hip just like you would with a normal side plank. Here we have a little bit more complexity, side plank reach through. We've got a little more movement. This move can feel a little awkward at first because it can feel like there's not a very long range of motion, but like we said with the obliques, we're preventing movement instead of necessarily inducing it. So your main goal here is trying to maintain a neutral lumbar spine while rotating at the upper back very slightly. 
moving on our do nots so first thing you do not want to do on any side plank is letting your hips sag we're trying to keep a neutral spine so ultimately the purpose of the side plank is preventing the hips from sagging or preventing your spine from laterally flexing like we talked about a little bit earlier same concept here with the hips being too high this is a laterally flexed spine just the opposite way as if your hips were sagging hips too high we want a straight line from head to toe and our last do not close chest so don't let your off shoulder roll too far forward pull that shoulder back and imagine you've got a logo on your chest and try to show that logo off as you're performing the movement you want to keep an open chest you have to rotate slightly in order to get that shoulder pulled down so again make sure it's pulled back and that's it folks thank you guys for listening and watching i have myself uh messing up here i thought you might enjoy this like comment subscribe and we'll catch you next time with the next one be safe